Guy needed a really reliable, sturdy, economical pickup for the property up here in North Dakota. So I did the right thing and went on the face space and bought one sight unseen, whilst on the way here. Happens to be this beautiful rig. She's been off the road since 2009. That's fine. It's got a four speed, makes everything better. I'm gonna try to get her fired up and drive her about 60 miles back to the farm. I just, it happened. I accidentally fell into a honey hole of square bodies and miscellaneous trucks and cars. Jessica left me with a checkbook. Mistake. I'm not gonna tell you which ones, but I actually picked up six vehicles today. Guy's nice, Parker. He's gonna let me just keep them here for a little bit till I can figure out what to do with them. But let's address this 83 first. We'll start there. Quick overview on the old gal before we start digging into her. It's a 1983 Custom Deluxe, half ton. It's a Chevrolet, as you can see from the grill there. It's got bucket seats, been modified on. It's a soil testing upper truck for Senex. If you're not familiar with Senex, it's a huge kind of oil gas company up in the Midwest. They've got gas stations. Some of the bigger stores also sell like panels and gates and feeders and have tires and stuff like that. Some of them even have fertilizers, which is where this rig came from, Stanley, North Dakota, which is my stomping grounds where I grew up. It's a four speed, four wheel drive, 208 transfer case, SM465. She'll pull that house clean off the foundation. It's got a 305 in it though, unfortunately, but it'll work. It's just fine. Basically, I'm just gonna use it to haul barbed wire around, rocks, miscellaneous stuff. Maybe a couple railroad ties, cold snacks, tires, spare tires, probably an extra engine or something. I don't know, we're just gonna use it, you know, to do things on the stuff, is what I'm saying. Let's take a closer look. So one of the main reasons I was drawn into this truck, I mean, other than the obvious, just drank her in, square body and stickers. She's from Stanley, North Dakota which is where a lot of my family is from. And my grandpa specifically drove this truck for a spring doing some of the soil testing. So I've got some family history in her. Look at this grill. It's intact. License plate looks fine. You can see there January 09. Look at the stack of tags on there. It's pretty impressive. She's a touch weathered, but not as rusty as we see over in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Again, it's the 4W. Does it got all the hubcaps? I don't believe it. Guess I got to, I'm looking at it. Don't got a hitch or nothing like that. They wouldn't have really pulled anything other than some bumper pull stuff. But you can see that was clearly overloaded. That's fine. Tail lightage, a little busted, no big deal. Senex. Where the customer is the company, fellers. Got some molding missing. That's okay. I think that's weather stripping. We'll just leave it hang out there. Wonder if the hubs. Oh yeah, ready to rock. These look brand new. I mean, we can get probably sixty thousand out of these easily. I mean, they're <coughs> harder than a rock. What are they? Spartans? Sure, we'll leave them on. Jacques have never been replaced. I can already tell that. That's fine. Oh, missing a wiper. Maybe I can borrow one off of a few of these other rigs that I picked up. Ain't telling you which ones. You can figure them out. He's got more back here, more up in the shop. My goodness. We'll maybe figure that out. See if I can come up with a deal. Got a couple rock chips, pretty common. We got Manuel cranks, that's fine. Don't really work, even better. In case you run her into the river, you know. You don't gotta worry about them digicals not working. 
This is missing. It's just on full vent mode all the time. Seems okay. He did throw in a bezel. She's even got a gauge later on it. Pretty basic instruments here. We've got no tilt on her, but, oh yeah, we've got positive engagage on the blinkerage. That's good. Horn might still work. This is unique. You're going to see right away. So there's normally a bench in here and you can still see the bench belts. But this right here, that's aftermarket. You can drop your cold snacks down there, recycle on them. Or you could stick your probe in there and take a sample of the soil. So basically fellers would ease into these fields, stick the soup label down there, drop that into the lunchbox, scoot back in the town to the Senex, and Jim Bob behind the counter would bleep bloop it into some sort of machine. And they'd say, yeah, you need vitamin B12 and C and A and whatever crops typically need. And then hopefully that farmer would buy them and so on. And that's basically what this truck spent its entire life doing. I think this is some sort of custom hatch system. Not sure. This made every dollar worth it. She's got the SM465. Seems to be shift latent still. Radio's gone. Never been maintenanced. Don't got to worry about that any. Dual tanks. I'll be dipped. Probably doesn't work. None of them do. What do we got here? Touchstone Energy. I don't know what that means. She's been smoked in just a tickle. Ooh, we still got the lighter upper in here. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Let's put that back. There we go. I like this look, and it feels even better. Over here, a lot of the same. What in the devil we got going on here? We got a General Electric... This is probably one of the first CBs ever made, and I ain't kidding you. I wonder if it works. We're going to find out. This is really cool. I would have to assume that this is very, very near 83, 84. I'm sure they put this in right when they got the truck. I don't know why they would have waited. Oh, just mouse stuff. Don't worry about that. Not really telling us much there. Oh, air conditioning, boop, it does have it. And it operates, kind of. And that's really about it for the interior. I bet it's really quiet in here going down the highway. Ooh, we got a cooler grabber. Let's see if it works. Kind of? Oh yeah, works perfect. See, guy just leans in here, grabs one out of the cooler, brings her back like that. And a coat hook. The old gal's rumored to have a 305 under the power bar in here. I don't know. Let's pop it open, see what we got. Does this one have the... I think it does. I'll check, and then we'll look. It most certainly has a... But she popped. I didn't even have to, you know, tickle on it. Let's see what we got. Oh, she, at first glance, is absolutely complete. With cruise control? No, can't be. Well, I'm looking at it. I don't know what we got going on. Let's take a look. Well, these are nice and tight. X-Side, classic. Probably won't work. Got some mice into the stuff there and doing things. Some expert wire looming. That seems normal. Whole bunch of vacuum lines missing. Did I already work on this? I must have, because them are all gone. This belt, that's going to last 15 miles at best. Fan clutch is good. You want them to be a little taunt when they're cold, fellers. They shouldn't just swing. Oh, and a new nut. Corporate blue. So it doesn't look like it's been swapped on or anything like that. It does definitely have the 305 manifolds. And these are smogger manifolds, but... There's no smog bracketry on there. So maybe the manifolds have been swapped or did the engine in fact get swapped? I don't know. I don't know right now. We can check it out later by decoding the block back there. Maybe if I get ambitious enough. Got a brand new looking PS line on her. So maybe that works. This seems to be leaking. We'll ignore that. Nice thing about North Dakota 
is the mice really, for some reason, don't get into the wires as bad as other states. I don't know why. That's just the way it is. Oh, missing a PS cap. And you can see that they didn't really care about that for about 17 months. But Parker's bringing us a new one, I believe. Oh, Krang's got it right now. Boom, look at that. It's even the right year. I'll be dipped. We'll throw that in there. Check on the Earl. Really, really low. No gas, no antifreeze. Probably 10 to 15,000 miles on it. That's good enough to run for quite a bit yet before we change on it. At least see how good it runs before we waste the $22 putting new stuff in it. Don't even have to check the transgression oil. Ooh, I could see a hose clamp on the front drive shaft. I'm gonna pretend I did not see that. I don't know what else to do, I guess. Oh, let's look at the fuel make it happener. Okay. Yep. 80s went to these really tall air filters for some reason. This one is really bad. We'll just get rid of that for now. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got, good thing I took that off. We've got uh, kind of a mouse house situation. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> just spilt it everywhere. Just dump that out over there. That's fine. Let's see if we've got linkage. Yep. Spring is really weak. It stays full throttle for a couple seconds. That's fine with me. A couple vacuum caps broke off. We'll have to address that or she'll idle at 1,742 RPM. The throttle blade is just blacker than the inside of a coffin. So she's running richer than Bill Gates. We'll fix that. A little bit of tune inch. Might have a vacuum leak maybe actually. Not sure yet. Lightning Ruler's all here, plugged in. It's got the Delco Remy still. So that's probably as old as me, seems fine. So I mean, we've got a complete small block Chevy that seems to be in operable condition. And this one's gonna be a little different. We're pressed for time. We need to get out of here quick. We've got a rainstorm and the lightning bolts coming at us. Plus, Jessica's making meatloaf at the farm. Can't be late. Normally I'd go through a whole bunch of steps on these, make sure they're good to fire. But I think on this one, we're just gonna toss a fresh battery in her, crank on it, throw some fuel, make it happen or down it, and just see what happens. I like how you got the biggest wrench in the toolbox. What kind of battery did you get for this thing? Oh. Super start premium, the big one. Oh, this is how you level them up, you know. We'll put that back. It's there for a reason. Someone put a new clamp on this 20 years ago. That's neat. Ooh, fire test. We got a lot of sparkles. Wait, wrong one. We had a... Uh, <laughs> We got anti-theft going on here, where they run the red to the ground, you know. That way a guy can watch his rig burn down before it gets stolen. That's way too tight. Let me see if I got a longer one. She's a little taunt, even for me. So if we rig this across, like this, and hook it on, see how she's just... You can't jump ditches and stuff like that. It just, from experience, ain't gonna work. I think I got a new one of these. And then we gotta tighten this. Crank saw that, clean her up. Otherwise you get the click, click. Also, these don't come blue. So someone was in here just Craigslist rebuilding this. I don't know when. That's not a original clamp. This is an original charging whirler. That's a different fuel pump. So she's been tankered on over the years. Who knows how many miles. This rig here, guy might hang on to for a while. After I paid the feller, I said, oh yeah. Does it have a title? Hmm. Keys? And it does. 
actually. So that's nice. What have we got for lengthage? Oh, we can even bring it under this. Oh, what is this? <laughs> something, something big got juiced up to the battery. We'll find out later. Okay. I like to breathe them in a little bit when you put fresh batteries. There's not much in here other than the heater motor and the headlights, but I don't smell any fire, which is a great start. I think they put three holes in this bracketry here. So when you strip out the first one, you go to the second, and then when you still didn't learn your lesson, you bring her home on the third, you know. Oh, yeah. Way too tight. Perfect. What is that? Don't know. Pets. And jam this in here. All right. Oh, I guess I should have checked the level. Checked. That's good enough. Craig's putting a new clamp on. While he's doing that, I'm gonna tune up the carburetor a little bit. And just make sure that this is, you know, gonna be ready. Get this needle loosened up a little bit. There we go. Quadra jets. They are reliable. Now that we got battery, let's see what happens when we twirl on the key here. Oh yeah, got the seat belt worn and button thing. Nothing there. Let's check the lights. Just because. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing there. And also nothing there, so. Zero lights, that's okay. Crane went ahead and picked up this here. Paracene? Broham edition she's got everything air conditioning power everything it's got just over a hundred thousand on it cassette player wood grain tilt headliners just taunt what a cherry you got it for uh 400 bucks not bad at all look at that air conditioning is even rebuilt in 06 got ice cube juice in it this thing's ready to run daily driver I'm gonna just crank on it see if it's spinning free I got nothing no horn blower motor is just barely turning over do I got a dead battery right out of the box? By box, I mean back of the truck. I'm sure I've had it for 15 years. Gonna have him drive up here and we'll hook the jumper cables on it. I used this battery to run a fuel pump for a long time and that sucked the juice right out of her. Gotta throw something under the tire here to chalk her up. How about a grain shovel from the 80s? Hats. Try that out. Oh, we got a lid flip on this one. Extra HPs. Look at that. Sparkles? Oh yeah, I just heard the charger whirl kick in, so we'll let this sit for a couple minutes. Charge late. I'll find something to dump down the fuel and make it happener. I guess we'll just see if it barks off right away. No idea if it has any fuel in it, but we'll find out. Guy's gonna go ahead and unlock a cheat code for you. Normally I bring a jug or a mustard squirter or squirt bottle, something. A container, 
that releases fluids. And I have some bad gas in there with some two cycle oil. I always like to have a little bit of oil on the gas when I'm doing stuff like this, just in case it doesn't start. And even if it does, you're lubricating the top end there. Unless you're in a real bad pickle, don't just shoot brake clean or carb clean down these. That being said, if you don't have said jug because you're in a really big hurry, you can swing into O'Reilly. And they got this on the end cap usually in the small engine section. This is 40 to 1, ready to use pre-mixed gas. And it's for two cycle engines, but this already has a little bit of oil in it. So you could just take these and dump a little bit down it. In fact, I'll fill the bowl. Try to. Oh yeah, about 2% is going in there. There we go. Chances are the needle's stuck, but we'll address that in a minute. Whoa, that's way too much. Perfect. Leaking out the base even. Nailed it. Well, normally I check for spark and see if it turns over and a whole bunch of other stuff, but we just, we ain't got the times. Let's twist on it, see what happens. This bucket is comfortable, not gonna lie. Oh, there we go. We got a lot of fanage this time. Fired. There we go. Yes, it's a runner. We got oil pressure. Ooh, not a lot of oil pressure. Slowly coming up. Sounds like a dead miss. Definitely missing. It's charging about 15 pounds of oil pressure. I'm gonna shut her off for now. Oh, well, she fired right up. Actually pretty darn easy to be honest. A little bit of clanking and banging, but it ain't building much oil pressure yet. It is low on oil, probably about two, three quarts. Krang just grabbed some. Happened to be Senex oil, go figure. I think the plan at this point is if we can cobble this thing together enough, we're gonna go straight to the O'Reilly's parking lot, drop the oil, change that, put some sparkulators in it, do all that stuff. I don't have anything with me other than some basic tools. I have some totes, but nothing that's applicable for this truck, go figure. We'll drop a little bit more oil in it, see if we could build some more oil pieces. That would be nice. Then we got this miss, so I'm gonna look for a lightning hose that's unhooked or Something's just on one of these cylinders. It might just come back around. Could be a stuck valve. I don't know. I don't know. This is 1540 Maxtron. I don't know. Heavy equipment stuff. Diesel engine oil, I would assume. That's close enough to a quart. I'm just hoping that this oil is broke down and deteriorated enough. It just doesn't have any of the viscosities left. But either way, small block Chevys typically only need about 10 pounds of oil pressure to run, unless you're way up in the ripums. We might just be able to just pamper it down to the parts store there and get some stuff done. Good enough. I'd rather be overfold than underfilled. And said no one. Latch works good. Great news is it's charging, because I didn't bring another charging whirler. But this belt, I just don't know if that's gonna make it. I wonder if a guy, that's what we'll do. I'm gonna run over to another one of these vehicles, undisclosed, and I'm gonna grab a charging whirler belt off of it because it should slip right on, and we'll bring that as an extra, just in case. The guy's gonna try to fire on it again without priming on it, and then we'll see if it builds a little bit more oil pieces now that we got something sort of fresh, at least not from the early 80s in it. Wonder if this clutch works. Kind of, sort of runs. Come on. Really bad mess. Good 
Good news is it's up to about 17 pounds oil pressure. Bad news is it runs on six cylinders and it's either knocking or has the worst exhaust leak I've ever heard in all 49 of my years. Something smoking too. Hmm. That's fine. Kind of in a predicament here. We just checked the firing order. That's right. But I don't have sparkulators or lightning hoses or nothing with me. But I do have a can of Berryman. So we're going to give her the old Italian tune-up. See if that'll bring one or maybe three of these cylinders back around. At least enough to get us to the parts store. And then we could start throwing a couple dollars at some easy to fix stuff like sparkulators and you name it. But it's definitely got a bad, hard miss somewhere in this. I didn't, is it smoking at all? I didn't even look. No. No smoke, so I don't know yet. Crank's gonna fire it up here in a second and then I'll feed this straight down the app. See if we can free up some of these rings, maybe a sticky valve or clean the sparkulators, or maybe just all of it. Go ahead. Okay. Keep going. Oh, that's, that's fine. I don't know if we're gonna make meatloaf if we keep up this pace. I would do anything for square bodies, but I won't do that. <sighs> Is this an agate? Could be, taking it home. Um. Bring her around again, fire it up. Chances are starting issue is just really bad gas that's sitting in here for 87, 11 million years. Yep. It's definitely knocking. Uh, I can't tell if it's valve train. Could be a stuck lifter or something, but it is not happy at all. Well, there's also no accelerator pump and the fuel make it happener. So it's kind of hard to even get it idling to where a guy can hook his ear onto it, right? I hate to sit here and just keep revving on it. It does have 20 pounds of oil pressure now, which is theoretically enough for a small block Chevy, but I don't know what to do at this point. Maybe if I just do nothing for a little bit, it'll come back around. Nope. Unlikely. Very. Tried to get behind the valve cover there and see the digits on the head. See if I could figure out what kind of engine this actually is. I have a hunch that this was actually swapped because it's got Smogger 305 manifolds on it, but zero evidence of even having a smog pump bracket or anything else smog related on this entire engine, including the vacuum lines and everything else. And some of the other stuff's been, tss, tss, tss. there's zero manifold gaskets on this side which is contributing to the issue of hearing the lifter or whatever else is stuck or bent or slamming in there. It's not running very good at all at this moment. And also kind of makes sense because this truck spent its entire life in a field in four high to the floor, I would imagine. And our grandpa, if you've ever seen him chase cattle, there's this hidden area right past the ketchup on the RPM that's called chase cattle. And that's pretty much where he lived. This thing's probably just been hung out to dry. Still ain't gonna give up on her. I'm gonna do the right thing. Try to put some more parts back on it that we took off. Dump a little fresh gas in her. And I think we're just gonna hit the road. See how far we can get, huh? Yeah.
<laughs> that was a very, it's like, yeah, place your bets. Over or under 10 miles. It's not gonna be good. It's got a block heater. Oh, we're putting money in it now. Whoa, whoa, we got sparkles. You just knock these out, reuse them. <laughs> I just realized we have not even checked clutch or brakes, but we'll just figure that out when we get to the road. Try the clutch really quick. I don't know. Whoa. Massive vacuum leak on the uh, brake booster. I don't think there's any brakes. <laughs> Go figure. The clutch bites right at the top of the pedal where you want it. Now, the also even more gooder news is when you hit the brake pedal, it just goes But nothing happens. To recap, running on six, something's knocking. We got bad gas, no accelerator pump, clutch is about gone, zero brakes, no tail lights or brake lights. So let's hit the road. Before we depart, better get this in here somewhere. There we go. All right, let's go left downhill so I can get a running start at this hill. Moving. Popped out of gear. Come on. Okay, I guess, here we go. I could smell the bad gas burning. I mean, that could help this thing significantly. Oh, go the wrong way. There's a gas station a couple miles from here. We're gonna swing in there and try to put some fresh gas in. It's, it's not good. Uh oh. The box fell open. That was weird. Started running on like two. Come on. You can do it. Those of you that met less than 10 miles, you're sitting pretty good right now. I mean, everything seems fine. Boy, they do need rain up here though. Quite a bit. Wow. or what's going on here. I don't know, but it's got to figure out the issue here because we got to basically mud bog to get out of this place. Black dirt construction will build you a road, but she ain't got no gravel. <laughs> Doesn't make sense.
It's at about 4% throttle. Runs like a dream. Well, for Pete's sake. This is just getting a little ridiculous. We might have a clogged fuel line. Or fuel filter. Not sure. Normally I put a fuel filter in line. Run a boat tank. This is why you don't do that. Seems to be fine. This is gonna be a long night. Got a little bit of a mud bog here. Someone put just a bunch of black dirt on the road. There goes a tow. I'll beat this. Oh, we need speed. No, this is the opposite. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the worst place to stop. It's fine. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. You really want these 30 year old tires when you get in the mud, you know. There we go. Oh. He must have just painted his barn. Looks nice. Worked my way up to 45 miles an hour. You gotta give it about 2% throttle. The good news is, once the oil got hot, we're down to maybe five pounds of pressure. Temp gauge doesn't work. Ah, don't need them. I think that fuel station's right up here. I'm gonna throw some fresh 91 in her. Unleaded premium. The nice thing about having a follow rig is we can definitely just throw this in the ditch if need be. But I'm coming back for it because, you know, Farmer's Union truck. Is that all it took? Can't be right. Two some gallons. I'm gonna get some beef jerky, some cheese, something to wet the back neck down a little bit. Well, what is going on? I don't like that because that means it was full on bad gas. Yeah, needle stuck at half, but saying it's full. I better get supper in before we leave. Guy just never knows what he's gonna get into. He's trying to ease her up to speed. Got a nice feller in there. He said if I make it eight miles, he's got an old van that doesn't run very good. It's been sitting there for many years. I can scoop that up for next to nothing. Maybe make it home on that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah, there we go. High gear. Got a hill. 
This thing just has no oil pressure. Wow. Otherwise, I'd probably spend the time figuring out a different fuel system and rebuilding the quadrajet. Oh no. Oh, Krang is pushing me. That'll work. Like a rock! If you don't have one, then you need two. That's a pretty decent looking fence, actually. A lot of peepos. Grab it here. Grab another one. Grab it too soon. Bring it back down. Here we go. Kind of like cruise control. The good news is, fuel mileage is going to increase tremendously. Here's the third gear. into some gravel here. This is more like it. Problem is, Feller hasn't quite picked up speed from that stop sign back there yet. And it's just, it's not happening. Oh, we got a burst of energy all of a sudden. And noise. Feller picked the perfect spot to stop. Great. I'm gonna snag the fuel filter off of the quadrajet here. I might also snag the line off the pump and blow backwards. I wonder if that pickup screen is plugged. This also has a switch later that does nothing, as we found out. Maybe that's plugged up. I don't know. There's no way to know. Snag this off. Normally fuel just spills out and sizzles in here. And then you have to question whether or not you got a fire putter outer. And we got nothing. So definitely a plugged line. And it's about 98.3% positive that's going to be going back to the tank. Being we don't have an air compressor or nothing else. Or even another fuel tank. Wait, I do have a jug. But I think that's only got... A couple of gallons in it. That might be the way to go, huh? Ugh. That means I think so. All right. Up, oh, there it is right there. Bring it over this and snag on it. Oh, we lay it right here in the middle. A little bit more. That's good. Yeah. Set them up like that. See, that'll be nice and level in here with some cushion. We just dip toe to jacuzzi crank top this off for us now that's good and uh 
Got a service loop down here, just in case. Maybe we put another tie in it. Bring it in right here. Yeah, that's a good okay. idea. But I think that's gonna work. Let's twist on it. Let's see what happens. Got this all safetyed up in here. Don't know if it's pulling out of the jug yet. Try her again, I guess. Bring it around right through these bees. That's fine. You know, if you just let them alone, fellers, they'll let you alone. I get asked so many times how come hornets don't sting me. You just leave them be. I mean, it's 32% better, but we still have the worn out engine, zero oil pressure kind of thing going on. Oh, for crying in the mud. You know, I think I'm gonna take the filter off right on the quadrant jet. Based on what I saw come out of the fuel line off the fuel pump make it happen, it is real bad. That was not necessary, it just felt like it. But anyway, there's a chance that that might be plugged up now. So let's just delete on that. Normally these are things that I check, but we're just in such a hurry. And uh, this is, you know, could be bad. Could be bad. Yeah, it's trashed. That is completely plugged as well, that primary screen. I don't know, you guys probably can't see in there. Just a bunch of rust. So we'll clean this up. We're on no filter, since we know that this is semi-fresh fuel. We'll plug her in again. Plan F subsection 49R 12er is I'm just gonna bloop in a little clicky clack pump over here on the battery. We'll blow out the needle all the way home. And that way we can bypass the fuel pump happener that's now completely full of crap that the diaphragm doesn't even move. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Those bales are a little loose, aren't they? Well, they're fine. There. Now a guy and a guy can see through this. So we'll snag this back on. That'll probably do nothing. And then we'll pull over and we're thinking about three approaches and put the clicky clacky in. All right, crank it. Stop. That's doing the fuel stuff. Or at least it is now. Hmm. Huh. We got some stuckage. Drive home attempt 47. Yeah. It's going good. Let's, let's put in that clicky clacky and do some other stuff. He got a brand new silo. Huh. Things escalated. That's why we've got no accelerator pump. Metering rods were stuck. Needle is completely shot and has some sort of algae on the end of it. We're just gonna basically rebuild this. Oh, it's looking good. 
coming right around. I took the old flexible light straw, just went ahead and <laughs> everything I can. I mean, this is basically brand new now. Just got to finish putting her back together and see what happens. Go ahead. Oh, wait a second. All right, try it again. Hold on. Now she ain't wanting to fire, so we got a sparkle tester in here. Go ahead. Yeah. We got lightning. So, severely flooded or not enough fuel? Hmm, let's choose one. Well, I think we're just gonna go ahead and push start it. That way, or at least we're getting closer to that meatloaf. Code turquoise. Moving on to the clicky clack. Ooh, let's not touch these. Maybe we will. You got a root driver? Basically, just gonna unhook it from the manual pump. Jam, snip, flip, poke the wires in. Maybe that'll be something. Probably not. Sun's going down in two and a half hours. Great. Changed our minds again. 19th different fuel setup. Ran out of gas in the cab trying to get it running. Can't siphon it because I broke the hose that fits down into the tank. So now we're back to running the fuel out of the tank that's bad. But I put a filter in. And then we clamped this one back up. And we're going to try it again here. Massive leak. At least you know we're getting fuel up there. Well, we'll have to try to find some different kind of hose clamp. She's just shooting out. Well, it's kind of running. We figure we might make it up to that tree row. Let's give it a shot. It does smell better in here though. Here we go. We're actually making some pretty good time right now. And we've got that tree row. I'll be Running about 50. The rank joint this thing is just completely shot. That's fine. We're gonna at least try to get over to Burnable. Hope it runs that far. But we might just keep going. I do know this for sure. We are scratching going to the parts store. Although I hate running this on old oil and everything else. She's just shot. 
right now, it's going to be a huge victory. Oh, oh, no, it's coming. Oh, it's going to be a huge victory if we could just get back to the farm at this point. So, hammer down while we can. Oh, yeah. The best she's run yet. Side of the road carb build. The back ass. Cruising. This is what we were just driving through that whole time. Having fun? Yeah. Uh, sorry about the section line, I thought that was a road. That's a road. <laughs> so, I think if we head down here, and snag, if my memory serves me correct, you know, this is the turn to the old highway. And then we just head over to, towards Blaisdell. I think before a guy, throws the old grease ray again on this small block Chevy. I'll also go ahead and replace the oil pressure sensor first. Make sure that's not faulty. And I could probably take a peek at this gauge too. We've got a couple 319.4 of those laying around. One doesn't have a needle, you know. It's intermittently running on seven, sometimes eight. Still holding out. Spark lighters and lightning hoses just might fix that. Probably not. I think I've got about 20 miles left, but we are now cruising. I don't know if you're going to believe this or not. I'm up to 50. 52. Like it. I just saw a Cadillac DeVille. Of course, no, there's weeds up there. Huh, swing by there tomorrow. So I'm gonna inspect those wires first. I can hold them out. And we'll pull those plugs. See what we got. I think I'm about to get the end again. Yeah, to push start me again, we're only a couple miles off. So he might have to do that again on this corner. But we're gonna make it. We're gonna figure it out. Smoking pretty good. Get push started again. Second gear. There we go.
we didn't quite make it all the way under our own power, but we're getting there. And she did fire up for us. We're getting off the close here. A couple more hills. We're at the farm. Just shut it off here. Hey, we made it. Was not pretty. It took a little bit longer than expected, but best part is, guy didn't dump a bunch of money into it and just start replacing parts and stuff like that. <laughs> it just didn't have them. But we got it here for pretty cheap. Battery, a couple things, not a lot of fancy tools. Now I just got to save on her for a little bit. She'll be back. We're going to have to do some sort of analyses and Maybe a compression test, see what's going on. It's way down on power. Simple tune-up could fix some of this. we got to figure out that oil pressure issue. Then maybe we can get into the 4WD and actually drive this thing around, see what it's got. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.